Weaver. I hate you guys. It's Joanna Weaver. I'm so honored to be with you again today for another One Thing Monday, where we focus on one thing for one week with the help of our mighty God for our mighty breakthrough. And I have such an expectation in my heart for today. I really, really do. I believe that God has something that he wants to speak to us, but then do in us. And so are you ready for that? I am so ready for that. Uh, as you probably are aware of, we're living in an unprecedented time, unprecedented time. We're in the middle of the coronavirus and it's affecting the whole world. And here in Montana, we've been on lockdown for two weeks and now it appears that we have another month of that. And I've just been praying for you that your heart would be encouraged during these times. Um, I know that there are so many reasons for fear, but there are just as many reasons for faith. And that's why we're doing this, you guys. I'd love to hear if you're with us, you can leave a little note in the comments and say, hey, I'm here. Um, this is just a chance for us to touch hearts. But but beyond that, I've really been praying that the Lord would give me his, his mind for you and his mind for me. What does the Lord want to say during these times? We're surrounded with so much information on the internet, um, even some wonderful Bible study stuff. But, but, you know, we need to hear of the word of the Lord for today. And so I feel so inadequate, but I am so excited because I sense, I sense that God's given me a message. So last week we talked about making God our refuge. And we talked about the first part of, of dwelling from the shadow of his wings rather than the shadow of our fears, you know, where we don't let hard times steal our faith or diminish our faith, but because we're living from a different place than the world. And so we talked a lot about that last week, and you can find that video in the video tabs on Joanna Weaver Books on Facebook or over at Instagram and even YouTube. So you check all of those out. But today I want to go to the next part of Psalms 91, verse 2. And I want you to see this. The writer goes on to say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And I want us to focus on this today because a mighty fortress is our God, you guys. Like over and over in scripture, if you do a word study on fortress or refuge or strong tower, you will see over and over that God welcomes us to run to him in times of difficulty. I think sometimes in our American Christianity, we've meant thought that following God meant we would never have trouble, but that's just not how it is. I mean, if you look at scripture, you know that in this world, we're going to have trouble. And so Jesus said, when, you, when you're afraid, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And when we think of that fortress, we're going to talk about this. I'm not sure if it'll be next week or a few other, uh, a few more weeks, but when we think about a fortress, I want you to think of what that means. It's a place of safety. When I've had the privilege of traveling in Europe or even in Israel, they would build fortresses on a hill, strong towers. And it was the place where when they were under attack, they would go to the fortress because it was usually, well, I'm giving you all the good stuff for the next time. So just know it's a place of safety. It's a place of perspective and it's a place of warfare. And we're going to unpack that later. But I just wanted you to understand that when, when God says uh, in times of trouble, when the psalmist say, I run to him in times of trouble to, to my fortress, it's this idea of running to a place of safety. And I was thinking this morning, you know, as a, uh, as a, in elementary school, we used to play tag. Remember that game? Can I just tell you? I'm rotten at tank because I am not a fast runner. And so, you know, you'd have a whole bunch of kids and you would, someone would be it and they would run around and they try to tag you. And your job was to get across the field to the place of safety. And once you got past that line, you were safe and they couldn't tag you and you couldn't be it. And so this idea of during a time of trouble, 
that we're not running in circles. We're not chasing our tail. We're not running after this news item or that news item, or we're not trying to figure this out or trying to figure this out. We run to the name of the Lord, to the strong tower where we are safe. And so this is what we're talking about when we say, let's make God our fortress. You know, I've been thinking of that word unprecedented times. And I've been asking God to give me an unprecedented faith. You know, never before, at least that I know of in history, has the entire world faced unprecedented times and the same crisis. Now, let me be clear. There have been unprecedented, unprecedented times in every generation. Every generation that has ever lived, there has been trouble. In fact, Psalms 34, 19 in the Living Bible says, the good man does not escape all troubles. He has them too, but the Lord helps him in each and every one. So when you think about history, you know, you know that in the early church, Christians faced unprecedented times as they were being killed for their faith and fed to lions. It, it was unprecedented times. You follow history and you know that all throughout, different people, different people groups, different generations had unprecedented times. But each time God met them in their trouble in a powerful way. And they gave them, and he gave them unprecedented faith. For their unprecedented times. So as I was thinking about this idea of making God my fortress and letting him build within me an unprecedented faith, a faith that I've never experienced before, a greater faith than I've ever known, I was thinking of, of that this is such an opportunity, you guys. We, as Christians even, we want to escape trouble, but God wants to meet us in our trouble and build something within us, a faith within us, that is a testimony that we can share. You know, if we're just good moral people, well, that's nice. But if we're, we're people who know how to access the peace of God in difficult times, that's what people are looking for. And so not only do we run to him and find unprecedented faith and strength and peace and joy in unprecedented times. But you guys look at what happens. Oh my goodness. This got me so excited. Proverbs 14, 26 says this, whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress and for their children, it will be a refuge. And this is what I want to camp on today because you guys, mamas out there, grandmas out there, teachers out there, pastors, wives, and ministry leaders out there, we have an unprecedented opportunity to, to come up with an unprecedented faith that not only is a refuge for us, but it's a refuge for the people that follow us. And I was thinking of my own mom and dad, you guys. I watched them grow up as I was growing up. I watched them go through difficult times. I watched them as, as a, a, a loan that they had co-signed for. That person went bankrupt and all of a sudden they were saddled with unexpected debt. Um, and, and I had to, and during that same time, my dad was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and he was so in so much pain, he could barely work. And yet I saw within them in those unprecedented times in their life, a faith and a peace that shaped me. Now they weren't in denial. It doesn't mean that they were never afraid. But I watched them navigate the unknown and the difficult in a way, you guys, that built something inside of me that I want to pass on to my kids. But it's only built in unprecedented times. So how do we do that? How do we, how do we find the Lord in such a way, a secure fortress that our children 
also find him as a refuge. Well, I think it begins with fear of the Lord. And fear of the Lord is different than fear of the world. Fear of the world freaks out. Fear of the Lord is this holy reverence and awe that we come under the covering of our God. We submit our will to him. We say, God, my life is yours. You can do whatever you want with it. That's the fear of the Lord. And as we come under that place of safety, a place of submission, he becomes our refuge and our fortress and our strong tower and our kids see us do it. And so they know where to run when they're in time of trouble. How do we do that? Well, first of all, building a legacy of unprecedented faith. First of all, I think we have to acknowledge difficulties. We have to say, yeah, kids, this is... This is an unknown time. And yet, rather than fearing what the world fears, like we talked about last week, we don't fear what the world fears because our hope is in the Lord. You know, our bank account isn't our source. Our job isn't our source. Our God is our source. Uh, back in our young ministry, I remember talking to the Lord because John's and mom and dad, as my mom and dad do too, they have some amazing testimonies about how God came through for them in unexpected ways. And I was like, Lord, I want to see the miraculous. I want to see the miraculous. But you know what? We've got to, first of all, acknowledge difficulties. We've got to be honest about where we're at without getting stuck in it. You know what I mean? Without that our kids are hearing us talk about, oh dear, oh my, oh me, oh my. That's not what they're hearing. They're hearing, yeah, we don't quite know what's going to happen, but here's the day thing, kids. Let's, let's go to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord. And I have to confess that sometimes my first response is not prayer. My first response is worry, <laughs> but I'm learning to turn that worry into prayer. And so just yesterday, um, Joshua was just saying, what's going to happen? This is just so weird. And I say, I know, I know we've never quite been here before, but you know what? God is still God and he's going to take care of us. And let's just go to him in prayer. And so we acknowledge the difficulties. Some of you guys are facing, you're facing some tough stuff right now. You're facing physical challenges. You're facing, facing um, financial challenges. You're trying to figure out how this is going to work, how you're going to make it. And so rather than getting in that cycle of despair, we turn those into requests and prayer. And we take our kids with us because here's what's the important thing is we teach them what to do in times of trouble. And so we acknowledge the difficulties, but we go quickly to the Lord in prayer. And I saw my kids, do, I saw my parents do that so often where they would take it to the Lord in prayer. But then also, not only do we do that, but you guys, we share God's faithfulness, how he's been faithful in the past. We call to remembrance the things that the Lord has done. And that brings me back to mom and dad Weaver's story. Um, the story is, is that uh, they were uh, serving a small church with a small salary and basically whatever came in the offering, that's what they used to live on. And there came a point where there wasn't money for the car insurance. And so they were going to have to let go of the car insurance. Dad said, well, I'll just walk and, you know, I can pick up stuff at the gro grocery store. And they didn't tell anybody, but they took it to the Lord in prayer. And as they did, you guys, um, they just, they said, okay, well, we, we don't know what's going to happen, but we're trusting you, Lord. We've made known our request. And a couple of days later, um, dad got a call and it was from an ins his insurance guy. And the guy says, hey, I just need you to come in and uh, sign a couple of papers for the renewal of your insurance. And dad said, yeah, but I can't do that this month. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to let it go. And the insurance man said, oh, no, you don't understand. Somebody came in and paid your insurance. And you just have to sign the papers. And the guy didn't want to tell him who it was, but over a couple of weeks, finally, the guy told him, yeah, it was so-and-so. This guy wasn't a believer. He didn't go to any church, but God had spoke to his heart. He went into the insurance company and he paid the bill. Now, I heard that story and I said to, to the Lord, I'm like, I want to see miracles in my life. And I just felt like the Lord said, oh, Joanna, I want to do miracles in your life. 
but you are so busy taking care of your needs according to your riches and glory, you don't have to tap into mine. And so during this time, this unprecedented time, we have an opportunity to acknowledge our difficulties, number one, take them to the Lord in prayer, number two, recount the faithfulness of God and just trust that what you need, he will provide. Now, I want to say, I do think it's really important that we don't say, oh yeah, God's going to do this. And I know it's going to happen just the way I want it to. And let's just believe for this specific outcome. Now, if the Holy Spirit puts that on your heart, that's fine. But I want to point my kids to God, not a specific answer. I want them to know that no matter what touches their life, even if God doesn't answer our prayer the way we want him to, he's still a trustworthy God. And so I can tell them stories of God's faithfulness in my life where he answered prayer and it wasn't the way I thought. Or he provided um, he provided a way where there seemed to be no way. Or maybe he did something. He used what seemed to be unanswered prayer to work something new in our lives. And I just felt so strongly, you guys, in the middle of this difficulty. Let's not get our, eye, our eyes on what's happening. Let's begin to declare the faithfulness of God. And, and we remind him. Even the Bible shows us how we remind him. Lord, this is what you did. You did this and you did this and you did this. And we tell our kids and we build their faith. I'm telling you, my dad is the best storyteller of God's faithfulness. He has so many stories. And if you ever met Cliff Gustafson, you probably heard a few. And I've heard many of them probably a couple hundred times. But do you know what it's done in me? It's built faith. It's built a oh, faith in God and a faith that he would be with me in middle of difficulties. I remember I worked at Burger King uh, as a teenager and, you know, we'd wait, I'd work the closing shift and it would be midnight, you know, 11, we'd close at midnight and those late hours and there weren't a whole lot of people there, but every once in a while I'd let my imagination go. And it was interesting where it went because I would think, well, if someone came in and, and held up, held up the store, the, the restaurant, and he would have the gun pointed at someone else, I would say, hey, listen, talk to me, talk to me. And I, I would, because I knew my life was in God's hands. I knew my life was in God's hands. There was such a mighty faith in me as a teenager that he was going to take care of me. And if he didn't take care of me, I was going to be with Jesus in heaven. That's the kind of faith, you guys, that we need. Not faith in an outcome, but faith in our God. So let's acknowledge the difficulties. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's celebrate stories of his faithfulness. But then let's be on the watch for how he might answer. Oh, it's not going to happen right away. Sometimes, I have to confess, there have been times where it's happened quicker than I expected. Sometimes it's months down the road that I look back, but as we're leaving a legacy of unprecedented faith, let's be sure that when God does answer, that we celebrate those answers. Now, this is why it's so important to take our kids to prayer, to bring those requests to God in the presence of our children, so that when God answers, we can link the answer to our prayer and we can see, no, it didn't, it wasn't just a coincidence. It was God. It was God. It was God. Oh, you guys. Oh, you guys. Whoever fears the Lord has a refuge, a secure fortress. And for their children, it will be a refuge. I just want to thank my mom and dad for trusting God in the difficult times. You know, we're walking through another time right now of unknown. Uh, we're walking through some physical issues and it's so beautiful because <laughs> even though it's been really difficult and there have been literally, I can't even, I can't even count how many times that we were at a health crisis that might mean my father or my mother would die. And we were up against it. There was no promises and, and we were praying for, for healing, but, but we didn't feel in our spirit necessarily that absolutely they were going to be healed. But here's what, brought peace during those times, my mama or my dad would just say, oh, I've had a wonderful life. God has been so good to me. And if I live, that's wonderful. 
But if I die, I go to be with him. And you guys, I think that's the kind of faith that we need during these times, that no matter what, our hope, our trust, our faith is in God. Our faith is in God. Isaiah 33, 6 says these words. He, speaking of God, will be the sure foundation for your times. You might be feeling shaken. <laughs> you might be going, what in the world is going to happen? But I want to encourage you to put down your roots deep into God and let him be your sure foundation in troubled times. And not only will he be a sure foundation, he's going to be a rich store of salvation and wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord, the submission of thy will be done in me. My life belongs to you. That's the fear of the Lord. It's the key to the treasure of all of the good things God has for us. Well, you guys, I hope, I hope that you have placed your trust in God. And if you haven't, I, it, today's a wonderful day to begin. And I want to just reiterate, trusting God is not an emotion. Faith is a muscle and it has to be exercised. But Jesus said, even if you have faith as tiny as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed and it will be. And I just want to encourage you, whatever you're facing today, run to Jesus, pour out your heart in prayer, but then allow, recount, remember his faithfulness and share it. Share it with your friends, share it with your children, share it with your grandchildren so that they too can put their hope in God. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I just, I just sense such an expectation in my life and in my heart, not only for our family, but for the body of Christ that God wants to use this time to build within us, guys, an unprecedented faith so that we can leave a legacy of unprecedented faith in this time. Well, God bless you guys. I just want to just pray over you, Lord, once again. I just thank you that you are our fortress. You're our strong tower. You're our refuge. We run to you today. And Lord, I thank you that that is not a passive act. It is an active faith that puts our hope in you, that refuses fear and chooses faith, chooses to believe, God, that you are able, you are able to keep that which is committed to you, even in the midst of troubled times. Lord, I come against the spirit of fear. Lord, I come against even the fear of the unknown that wants to attack us. Lord, you said that, that we should just take today, <laughs> just live today, that you will provide grace for today. And then tomorrow, whatever tomorrow holds, you'll be there waiting for us and you will have everything that we need. Oh God, I'm just excited to hear the stories of faith from those that are listening today. I, I'm excited to hear what you're going to be doing over these next few weeks and months of uncertainty, may you open our eyes to see your goodness in the middle of it all, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. I'm so glad you joined me today. Um, I'm going to just hop over to the comments and see what's happening. So good. Love to see you guys. Thank you for being here. One of the things I would just absolutely adore is if you would take time and share your story of faith. Remember a time that seemed impossible where you didn't know what you were going to do, but God showed up and he made a way there where there seemed to be no way. I think I'd love, I'd love us to share those stories because your story encourages me. And I hope that my stories have encouraged you. Um, let's talk about the goodness of the Lord. Let's not just nurse and rehearse our fear. Let's exalt Jesus and let's give him praise. So I know I see a bunch of you out there that have some wonderful stories of God's goodness to you. Um, I would just encourage you, let's let's not get our eyes on, on the present um, and let's not live in the future, but let's recount the goodness of the Lord in our past because we're going to carry that faith that's been built in the recounting of our of his goodness will bring that faith into today and i'm feeling it in my soul i'm feeling it i'm feeling it <laughs> and i know that it's a gift of faith 
that God wants to give each one of us today. So um, don't resist it. Don't say, oh, well, that's just not realistic. No, we can acknowledge the reality and still experience the faith and the peace that we need. So awesome, awesome. So glad to have all you guys here. Uh, thinking of so many of you, I know there's a lot of you facing some severe physical problems right now. But I just know God's going to be faithful. I love that, Sarah. God's given you a calm these days that there's no fear in love. Yeah. God's perfect love casts out all fear. And one of the things that I was reading, there's so many verses about fortress. And one of them talked about that the, he's our fortress and it's his unfailing love. I love that. Another person shared that um, they survived a battle with an alcoholic brother, but God carried him when carried them when he went to them. Awesome. Awesome. So many good things. So many good things. Let's leave a legacy of unprecedented faith. Faith that didn't make sense in the moment, but unleashed God's power to move on our behalf. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't even know what to do with myself. And that doesn't mean that I don't feel fear because there are times when it wants to come. But God's doing something in me and I'm believing that he wants to do something in you as well. So let's let him, let's let faith arise. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. If you're watching the replay, be sure to comment. We want to hear what you have to say. And if you would, leave your faith story, would you like in the comments below? And we'll just have this one post that just recounts the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Have a glorious day. God bless.